This is a very good question. Most people would say something along the lines of, it's a way to explain the unexplainable. While this is certainly true, it obviously doesn't explain everything. This video certainly cannot answer the question entirely because experts can't even answer this question. However, they do have some answers, and that is what I'd like to share in this video. I realized while preparing this video that I misspoke in my Go Beckley Tepe video. It is inaccurate to say that religion started at Go Beckley Tepe, but it is accurate to say that it is the world's oldest sanctuary. Religion, we think, dates back to the Upper Paleolithic. Humans have a hyperactive agent detective device, or HAD. This is an evolutionary adaptation we have because failing to detect an agent, like a lion, is potentially fatal while thinking an agent is there when one is not is less costly. In terms of religion, Had would explain why we posit God as a source for things we can't explain. As an example, Germanic tribes attributed thunder to Thor. For Boyer and Atran, religion stems from our tendency to extend our cognition of agency to things that are, aren't alive. Put another way, we recognize agency in other animals and extend it to non-living objects. Humans are great at a lot of things, two of which are detecting agency or control and the ability to anthropomorphize other beings and objects. We tend to see these things even when they aren't there. Some propose that animism arose out of the human tendency to attribute our qualities to natural and unknown phenomena. Spirits are a natural byproduct of this. In this byproduct model, no evolutionary pressure for religious ideas existed. Instead, these concepts piggybacked on the necessity to look out for predators, and this gave rise to universal bad guys like demons. Spirituality has a strong genetic component. I bring it up because in order for genes to be selected for, they must confer some kind of benefit for the species. Many factors may have contributed to this selection, such as reduction in fear of death, fear, feeling of being in better control of the environment, feeling of being monitored for moral behavior, etc. The benefits are to make better hunters and warriors greater resistance to stress and disease, moral behavior, and improved social cohesion. This would be especially helpful during trying times such as droughts and ice ages. Hayden suggested that severe droughts several million years ago led to the ability of hominids to forge emotional bonds that helped with survival. Ritual and sensitivity to religious indoctrination became adaptive in that it created a sense of group cohesion and identity that maintained group boundaries and unity. All vertebrate societies have ritual because it provides a means of communication that is essential for social coordination. In the archaeological record, 
we see evidence for supernatural concepts that might constitute a type of religion about 50,000 years ago. Some evidence, like rock art, points to shamanism as the first form of religion. Most evolutionary approaches don't try to identify the most archaic religion, but to identify behaviors universally involved in religion. These approaches try to relate the behaviors to subjective pressures. Cultural anthropologists like Boyd and Richardson have developed models in which they conceive the spread of religious beliefs as partly analogous to the spread of alleles. In particular, these models allow scholars to draw connections between genetic evolution and cultural transmission of religion. In this modeling of cultural transmission, certain cognitive and behavioral biases are relevant. For instance, the frequency bias toward cultural conformity and prestige bias toward formerly successful models. Research shows that the nature of ritual behavior fosters cooperation. It has also been shown to promote prosociality and stabilization of society. Since chimps and bonobos exhibit some ritual behavior, it is likely that our hominin ancestors also exhibited these behaviors, though it's hard to tell from the archaeological record. Religious beliefs and practices occur in all human cultures. It appears that our cultural capacity, the ability to create complex culture, predates modern human lineage. It has been assumed that religion originated in Africa during the Upper Paleolithic and played a vital role in our Out of Africa expansion. Humans have a biological need for a social world. We need an emotional life. Group ritual enhances social support systems and group identity. In our brains, we have natural opiate-like substances called opioids. Communal rituals release these and facilitate social attachment within the group. As stated before, we believe shamanism was the first that we would recognize as religion. A shaman, as conceptualized by Iliad, is a central spiritual practitioner whose activities are important to the lives of the group. Shamanic rituals are important to the entire group and mainly take place at night, usually lasting all night, with the shaman dancing, drumming, rattling, and chanting. These rituals united the group, and these rituals the shaman would call to the spirits to aid community members. The shaman would use these spirits to heal the sick and guide the deceased into the afterlife. Shamanic practices can be seen as enhancing individual and societal survival by integrating material pertinent to survival, social bonding, and health management, particularly stress. A key aspect of the shaman is the ability to enter an altered state of consciousness, ASC, which is produced by a variety of methods the most used being drumming, singing, dancing, and chanting. Other methods include fasting and ingestion of psychoactive substances. Research establishes that shamanism is a cross-cultural phenomenon found worldwide in hunter-gatherer and simple pastoral societies. According to Iliad, shamanism dates back hundreds of thousands of years in hominid prehistory. 
While Winkleman states the evidence suggests that shamanic rituals were an important part of Paleolithic cultural practices, 40,000 to 10,000 BP. These rituals are homologous with chimp chanting, rain dances, and the like, indicating that these behaviors are genetically based and served important social functions before our lineage is split. Shamanism also makes use of miming, a trait that grew out of our pre-linguistic hominid past for building group cohesion and organization. The universality of shamanic ASCs indicates the underlying biology and significant relationship of induced brain conditions due to ritual activities. Rituals lead to ASCs by activating a conscious parasympathetic mode. The parasympathetic nervous system is the calming part of the nervous system. While evolution drove development of shamanism, shamanism affected human cognitive evolution by integrating brain-mind states and altered consciousness. It may have also facilitated integration of self. While not perfect analogs, we can draw some conclusions about our ancestors from modern hunter-gatherer groups. For instance, egalitarian groups hold fewer religious beliefs than their more complex counterparts, but they still have religion. Note on terminology. Hominid refers to gorillas, orangutans, chimps, and humans. Hominin refers to the tribe Hominini humans and our close extinct ancestors. BP means before present and standard practice is to use the date January 1st, 1950. As always, please leave your comments in the comment section. Uh, my sources are linked in the description. Have a great day. Stay curious and never be afraid.